back to the Moulin Rouge. Tony Award winner Aaron Tveit is reprising his role as Christian in Moulin Rouge the Musical. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. It's a rainy day on Broadway, but we're here with a very sunny Broadway star, Mr. Aaron Tveit. Hello, hello. How you doing, sir? I'm good, how are you? Good, back on the boards. Back on the boards. I love it, I yeah. love it when you're back on the boards. Me too, thanks. So what I would love to do with you today is walk through your resume a little bit. Sounds great. This is the Neil Simon Theater. Yes, it is. This is where it all started. This is where it all began for me in New York, yeah. Yeah, what a wonderful place to be to make so, it probably So we're talking about Hairspray. You were Link Larkin. Yes. And mm -hmm. you did it on the road first. I did it on the road for a year. Yep. And then they asked me to come to New York and I got to come here. And actually, very, very funny story about my opening night. Because, you know, I grew up just about an hour, yeah. hour or so upstate. Yeah. So my high school course teacher organized a bus of people to come to my opening night. And like 70 or 75 people from my hometown wow. came to my opening night. <laughs> and so I got all this entrance applause and everyone on, in the cast on stage, you know, they had no idea. They were like, who is this guy getting all this <laughs> entrance applause? So I had a very, I, I stacked the deck for myself in the crowd that night. I mean, it's still one of my favorite musicals yeah. and just everything about it, the music, the story it tells, how fun it is. That last I still, you know, you can't stop the beat, that, that finale number. No matter what happens in the show, that sends the audience out, you know, in such, on such a high. Is that choreography, that Jerry Mitchell mm -hmm. iconic, you mm -hmm. can't stop the beat choreography, is yeah. it easy to learn or difficult to learn? It's difficult to build your stamina up for it, because ah. it's basically just cardio. Okay. You know, I got very addicted to coffee doing hairspray. I was not a big coffee drinker. And I remember I used to drink like an entire iced coffee when they called five minutes to places just to kind of smile and be shot out of the cannon. The Neil Simon also, yes. you were the star. Well, yes. you and Norbert Leo Butts yep. starred in Catch Me If You Can. That's right, yeah. That was a big role. Big role. And it was very much a, a big moment for you. I still think the show didn't necessarily run as long as obviously we, we all hoped right. it would. And I, I, I think that show is going to get a big revival one day and people are going to realize kind of how brilliant it is. You know, it's the same creative team as Hairspray. Yeah. So again, when we all got to return to this building, it felt like home for a lot of us. It was a wonderful, wonderful time and I, I still am just so grateful that I got to do that. It was very, very hard, but, it, but wonderful. Okay, so here we are. Yeah. You were in Wicked. I was you, in you're Wicked. You were part of the uh, Brotherhood of the White Pants. That, yeah, 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 right, yeah. yeah. 2008, I was, uh, I was in Wicked, which is, seems like, seems like no time ago and forever ago. I had so much fun. I saw Wicked in previews okay. while I was down here on a college, like, New York City trip. Okay. And, uh, Did you know it was going to be a hit? I, yeah, I knew. I, I thought I was going to be. I mean, she flew. She flies. Like, it's like. She, Does she? She flies at the end of the first act. I just think Wicked is this prime example of like how to do a, a long running show for a long time. The people that they bring in still are amazing and yeah. they, they find all this new talent and it has, it has moments that just like hit you across the face in the best way. And I, I love I loved doing it. It was one of the most fun I've ever had that I've ever had in a, in a show. I really feel like, you know, like 30 years from now, we're going to look at the Broadway stars of the moment and, and it's going to be like, they've all been in Wicked. You know what I mean? I mean, Probably. it just launches yeah. so many people. Well, if you think about all the incredible women that have played yeah. the two witches yeah. and, and, and all the other parts too. I mean, but they really, I think the job that they've always done finding talent for the show is, yeah. I think that's why it's still running. I feel like when you're like in your 60s, you could play the wizard if you wanted to. Maybe, why not? It'll be an option. Yeah, yeah. It'll still be here. Sounds good, the wizard, that's a good track. That's a good, that's a good gig, that wizard gig, maybe. <laughs> Aaron, the Booth Theater, you got to do one of my favorite shows next to normal yes. in this theater. Yes, I did. First of all, it had this amazing music, and then emotionally, yeah. it was so big, and then you were doing it all in this very intimate space. Tiny. The set was like a three level house. Yeah. And I spent a lot of the you were time up there a lot. on the second and third levels. <laughs> but right right where I was in the third level, I was just exact like exactly with the upper balcony. You really felt like you could reach out and touch the balcony on stage in that theater. I think it's my favorite theater on Broadway. You've been in a lot of uh, joyful shows and and I mean Moulin Rouge kind of gives you all the emotions. Mm -hmm. The next normal was definitely a big emotional show and a healing show for so many people. Yeah. What's it like to be a part of an experience like that? Tremendously meaningful for all of us. I mean, we all had such a close connection to the material. We were all so moved by it. And then once we started performing the show, the stories that we would hear at the stage door every night, you know, because mental illness is still really, it's still really stigmatized, I think, in our culture. And so, so many people would say to all of us, you know, 
that's my mom, that's my dad, that's my sister, that's my brother, that's any, any family member you can imagine. And I think it just gave them the freedom to express what they were dealing with and that it was okay, that other people were dealing with the same thing. Yeah. And that's the pinnacle of theater, right? That's like what you, you want to be able to move people and tell stories that matter. And for me that, you know, it's the, it's kind of the most rewarding thing I've ever gotten to do because of that. How do you feel about spoilers? Your character Gabe, there's a big spoiler. Big spoiler. I'm very precious about spoilers. Yeah. Like I still don't want to tell people spoilers. Are you the same way about? I try to keep spoilers unspoiled, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't prep anyone for, uh, for anything when they came in to see it. So I wanted everybody to have their own reaction. And we heard a lot of reactions. Oh my God, it got big reactions. It did, like yeah. it was so crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this the show where the tomato tots started? Or was that Wicked? When did the Tomato Tots show up? I don't quite <laughs> know. I don't know. I don't know when that first popped up as a term. Um, <laughs> but yes, no, I mean, the, the Next to Normal fans were hugely supportive of the show yeah. and really supported me through my continued endeavors. So yeah. they, maybe this was the, yeah. the real beginning here, yeah. Now this is a beautiful spot. Here we are. Yeah. Is it weird to have that? Like there, <laughs> are you very used yeah. to now having an enormous? I mean, you've done this before. Next to normally there's an like enormous. Yeah, photo. I mean, you don't really ever get used to it. Like, <laughs> I imagine like in the shot right now, I'm just like creeping over my shoulder, which is <laughs> very funny. But no, it's it's you know, it's amazing. It's amazing. But it is nice when when you sort of reach the, the, that point, right? And have those. Yes, it's it's amazing. And uh, listen, uh, as you know, commercial theater's hard, and so you know a lot of shows you work on don't achieve this kind of success. And so to have something that you're so tied to and that you created and that you have such a has such a close place in your heart to be able to go back in I mean that's a dream come true so what's it like to to think about your career you built I mean you know it's hard to sort of have those moments where you sort of take check yeah. of yourself yeah because you, you know you know it's not something I do often I don't think and you yeah. know people don't naturally do that so this kind of walk yeah. through my <laughs> my Broadway history it's very special and I remember when I started studying theater and kind of falling in love with theater, all I wanted was a career in it and just be able to be in shows and, and, and play on stage. And here I am approaching 20 years from when I left school to do Ren. And wow. I somehow have kept it all going and I'm so grateful for it.